Welcome to Marketing with Vino, the edutainment business growth podcast. Mixing education and entertainment to make growing your service business much more fun. Your hosts, Quinton Venter, online marketing expert, and Gabby Kowalski, creator of the Business Freedom Formula, have a glass of wine and share powerful and up-to-date strategies to help grow your service business fast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of Marketing with Vino. Um, you're, you're listening to Quinton and the amazing Gabs. Hey, Woo! Gabs. How are hey, you today? Awesome. Hello, awesome people. I'm feeling pretty fantastic. Quinton and I have... Uh, I've just been chatting for a couple of minutes about what we're going to chat to you guys about, and we we did already start drinking our wine. So I don't know about you, Quinton, but I'm I'm feeling kind of warm. <laughs> I am. Like I'm already starting to um, get red in the face, but lucky no one can see me, so we can continue. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And I can see you're drinking white wine today. It is. It's a very hot day here in Sydney today, so I thought I'd tap into a much cooler wine, and it is a Shannon Blanc from South Africa, going back to my roots. What are you sipping on today? Oh, I like it. I've got uh, I've got a Sav Blanc from uh, Oyster Bay. This is actually one of my just classic classic ones I like to have in the fridge. Ah, oh, beautiful. It's um, smooth, it's nice, and it's free of the 202 preservative, which, by the way, anyone listening, not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I actually is- went, I went to a Riesling event on the weekend where um, Taylor's was uh, representing some of their wines, and I actually learned a lot about wines now, so I'm starting to feel ah! more, of a, more like a wine expert with um, the acidity <laughs> levels and dry and sweetness, so I'm starting to get to the concept. <laughs> Guys, if you keep listening in a month from now, I'm going to be the expert here and tell I'll you Exactly like which wines go with what foods. Marketing with Vino is going to turn into marketing for Vino. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is I've actually had a few wine companies, wine reps starting to follow me on Instagram because ah. I put up a photo and a hashtag of some of Riesling. That's so awesome. That's pretty funny. I like it. Ah, who knows who's coming? Yeah. What's coming? <laughs> well, guys, what we wanted to chat with you today about is marketing. So... The concept we want to share with you is that marketing as a topic is actually like a massive topic. It's I look at marketing and I see it as like an ocean. There's so many components to it. You know, when you look at sales instead, so just so if you're if you're totally fresh and you're going, well, what's the difference between marketing and sales? Marketing is everything you do to attract a client. Sales is everything you do to have them spend money with you and keep uh, and yeah. keep them. Yeah. Just to give it to you really, really simply. So even though sales is a big topic in itself, there's like, you know, heaps to learn about, you know, human behavior and all of that kind of jazz. Marketing to me is an ocean. It's a vast, vast ocean. And often I see business owners making the mistake that they try and take the ocean in one swim. So today we're going to tell you it is so much better to jump in the ocean and explore parts of it, really take in the, the awesomeness of it, that wave, that fish, that little bit of coral, then to try and take the whole monster in one go. Because what happens is you're not going to get the best experience. So just like if you were trying to swim the whole ocean in one go, you'd just be paddling along, you'd miss all the sights, you know, you'd get to the end and quite frankly it wouldn't be really like, a, it wouldn't be, what's the word I'm looking for? It, um, it wouldn't be solid. Yeah. It wouldn't be a solid experience. Yeah. So there's two parts, you know, Quinton and I were talking uh, really briefly just before we, we press record, and there's two parts to marketing. There's offline marketing and online marketing, and it's really, really super important that you guys get that before you even venture into the ocean of online marketing, that you've actually been around in business for a while, and you've rocked at exploring offline marketing first. So Quinton's got some gold to share about this. Over to you, my friend. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I think you can't blame business owners that are just starting out or that are, that are starting to scale their business uh, in a sense of overwhelm because the ocean is big. There is so much going on in the ocean. I think it causes a lot of overwhelm for them. What is the best thing they should be doing right now? What is the next thing? How can they stay ahead of the market? So they're going out and they, they're noticing all of these, um, the, these different tactics and different things to be using, whether it's online and offline, to grow their business. And they just get stuck because they don't really know how to move forward from it. And I guess I can't really blame them because I've been there as well. I mean, when I first Me started too. out, yeah. We, we yep. all have. and the, I the, tried to take that ocean in one go. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess even now, um, it's making it even harder because 
when you're being pixeled, if, you, if you've looked at a strategy, let's say an Instagram strategy um, or a LinkedIn strategy or a referral strategy or a launch campaign strategy, if you've looked at those websites, you're most likely going to be retargeted by those people. So they're going to be in your face more often and therefore it's going to cause more overwhelm because all of a sudden you're now seeing them pop up everywhere and therefore you're just losing track of what you should be focusing on to get results and then to move onwards. Um, I like the analogy of the ocean and to start smaller because if you think about it, before you go out in the ocean, and I know that there's a lot of people that do just jump in the ocean straight away and learn how to swim, but most of us don't. Most of us don't have that luxury or we, we try and play it safer and we actually start learning to swim whether it's at the local pool or it's in a dam or it's in your, in your backyard pool um, and then you slowly start venturing out to start tackling the ocean. So th that's the main topic of today's conversation and um, as we spoke about this before that you need to learn how to, how, to, how to master the basics before you start to swim in the ocean, before you start tackling it. So if you can master that and you know the principle of moving forward in the water, you need to be paddling, then you can apply that anywhere. And that is the value that no longer does the environment matter. It is simply you applying the same strategy of warming people up that aren't familiar with you, applying value and then taking it forward when they are ready for the sale. You, you advise them in the appropriate um, program or service or whatever it is that you offer. What are, yep, what are your thoughts it. on that? Oh, bang on. And this is where, you know, I notice that so many people, and it's, it's, it's like literally it's not your fault. You're doing the best you can, you know. Often it's in the you don't know, you don't know it basket, yeah. you know, that you get told market. So you give it a crack. But ultimately... You know, you need to learn how to swim first before you take the ocean. And there's a lot of foundational stuff to do when it comes to marketing, which so many small business owners don't do. We touched on this in episode one. I want to go a little bit deeper um, onto this right now. So big companies know they need to do market research. They need to. They know that they need to test their idea, their product, their service before they chuck a hell of a lot of time and money into it. Otherwise, you know, it could just be an idea they have, but nobody wants it. Yeah. And this is where, you know, if you go offline first, meaning instead of like, you know, trying to jump in and bang, I'm going to do Instagram and Facebook and, and an opt-in and an email funnel and a website, you know, I laugh. One of the first things business owners do is they get a website and nine out of 10 times that website changes, gets completely remade yeah, many yeah. times over, thousands of dollars down the drain because they think they need a website first. You really don't. No. Guys, get a landing page, a one page. It's super cheap. Get someone to make you a page. Test your cool thing out in the marketplace. Get some, you know, if you see that people are loving it, then build a website around that. You know, whereas if you go in and build the monster first without even knowing if anyone wants it, well, <coughs> you're wasting money. Yeah. And so... Ultimately, one of the um, one of the mistakes that um, that business owners make is they don't market research. They don't test their message, their offer, and their market, and to make sure that it's actually going to be profitable. They get an idea in their head; it sounds great, you know, and they go off and do it without first finding out does anyone want my cool thing. And if they go online and and waste a lot of money, look, it could work, it could not. Ultimately, though, if you haven't tested, if anyone wants your cool thing, if you're the, if you and your mum are the only people that think it's cool, <laughs> the um, and then you go and invest heaps of money into online marketing, you know, don't be surprised if the whole thing flops. Yeah. So, so go out and actually test your thing. You know, um, deliver your cool program, your cool product, your cool service out in the world offline, using marketing strategies like referrals and joint ventures. And if it's proven and people are loving it and they're raving fans and they're bringing you more business, then you know you're onto something wicked awesome, then go offline. Sorry, online. <laughs> that, that must be the wine talking. <laughs> and we're yeah. just getting started. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but then you, go, um, then you go online. And when it comes to online too, the other thing I've noticed is, and look, I'm a 100% a victim of victim, a culprit. What's the, 
I'm guilty of this. <laughs> so one one thing I've, I've noticed is some people will just go online and try and do it all themselves. They might listen to someone's podcast or a, or a YouTube video or a webinar that's designed to sell them into a program, yeah. and they think, you know, I can do this myself. <coughs> Excuse me. The um the truth of the matter is online. Oh, it's it's a it's it's a massive. Like we're talking, you know, that is the biggest part of the ocean. When you look at marketing, the biggest part of the ocean is actually the online component. Yeah. And there's areas where it goes so deep and scary that, you know, if you actually were to go swim in the ocean and go scuba diving, there's places you don't want to go down unless you've got super, super, super hot gear and people around you that, you know, can yeah. take you down those depths, yeah? <coughs> so what I've noticed is this, that people will go, okay, cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Facebook's where it's at. And Let's start, you know, posting up lots of posts and let's do sponsored ads and let's, you know, let's just go nuts on Facebook. And they go, well, you know, I'm putting all this money into uh, my ads and I'm not getting the results. That's because you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. You should have an expert do it for you. So, for example, Quinton is a Facebook expert. He he actually runs all my ex, um, my Facebook stuff now, and I'm so wrapped. And it's funny, I was actually resisting hiring a Facebook expert at the beginning because I thought, oh, yeah, I can do this myself. You know, I've I've done enough uh, research into the topic. Wank, wank. The, um, <laughs> the I've done courses. I've done this. You know, I know what I'm talking about. I teach other people how to do this stuff, right? The um. And, um, but the funny part was this, I thought it was going to cost me more. So it's silly. You know, if I know how to do it, I might as well do it myself. Big mistake because Quinton's an expert. So if I'm going deep into the ocean and I've only ever dove maybe 12 meters down before, and now I want to attack 30 meters, I'm not the right person to go down by myself. I need to go find myself someone that's been there before can take me down. This is the irony since, since having Quinton take care of all my stuff, it's actually costing me less money because even with his fee, he's able to get better <laughs> results at a cheaper rate than I ever could. He's getting like, you know, click through rates with like ridiculous amounts. I don't know, like whatever, two cents or whatever it might be. The um, mine were costing me <laughs> sadly a lot more than that. <laughs> the um, So the message there is when you're ready to go online, you want to look at getting an expert for yourself. Someone who knows their shit has proven results uh, for their clients. And whenever you want to hire anyone in a business, you want to ask them a couple of questions. One of them is who are you and, uh, and what have you done? You want to get proof from them that they've actually gotten results for other people that are similar to you. Because if you know, anyone can, um, can promise you mountains, however, you, you got to make sure that they can deliver too. Yeah. So yeah, would you agree with that? Yeah, like I actually want to add to it that since I've been taking over Gabby's Facebook um, ads, she was actually over in Bali enjoying herself over the silly season and the constant updates that I was giving her is, hey, you've got another conversion or this is performing well, that is performing well. And she keeps notifying me like, yeah, got another sale, got another sale, event, there's getting, there's getting more and more bums on seats. And that's the great thing. It actually gives you leverage so that you know that the job is getting done, so you don't have to constantly sit there and monitor the ads and want to improve the copy. You've actually got someone that will, will take, that, take that responsibility and just ease your mind with, all right, Gabs, it's getting done. These are the results so far. This is the next steps. And having someone that actually reports back to you gives you that extra peace of mind. So, oh, yeah. awesome. It was brilliant. I, you know, I had a completely relaxing holiday and I'm making money while I'm, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome because one, it's costing me less than it used to and <laughs> I've got all my time back. It's ridiculous. Yeah. However, think of it like this, guys, because <clears throat> I get it. Depending on where you're at in business, some of you may not be able to afford certain things, but that's okay. You can either do free or paid marketing. If you don't have the cash to hire experts yet, then get masterful at the free shit. For example, you know, leverage joint ventures. You know, go nuts on joint ventures. Don't try and sit there and become a Facebook advertising expert or an email automation funnel building expert. You know, I'm sorry, but you're not going to learn everything you need to do um, to know in someone's three-day course. Anyone listening to this with a three-day course on that stuff, my apologies. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, though, you're not. You know, you're going to come into that course either incompetent or competent. Yeah. And after that course, you might be good. 
in order for you to get exceptional results, you've got to be masterful. You know, that, that's the truth of it. To me, in business, you're always going to get the results one, one, um, one note below you. So if you're really great at something, you're going to get competent results. If you're really excellent at something, you're going to get great results. If you're masterful at something, then you're going to get excellent results. Yeah, that is and so true. <coughs> I've, I've, the funny thing is when I start taking – when I do my onboarding call with clients, I, the, the very first question I ask him is, why do you want to go online all of a sudden? And I, I kind of gauge their answer to see where their mindset is at. And oftentimes when I speak with someone that, that's just starting out in business, they're thinking that online is the only way to go in order to start generating leads. Now, let me tell you, online is a fantastic way to go to generate leads. It is phenomenal. Facebook is incredible. So is Instagram. So is Pinterest. So is LinkedIn. So is YouTube. All of them are phenomenal. It just depends on when you're ready to, to go down that venture. So when I take on clients, um, the very first conversation that we're having is I'm actually doing a lot of effort to steer them away from Facebook to see if they're actually ready for it. And I'm waiting for that crucial answer where it is, why are you using, why do you want to go on Facebook? And the moment I hear an answer saying, because I can make more money on Facebook, I can grow my business more to, to reach my financial goals, then that's a no-go for me. Just that's a red bells because for someone that is very money driven to go online to start generating more income, it's a very short-term relationship that they're looking for with, with their online audience. They just want to have that sale in order to reach that financial um, goal. The, the it's, answer, the, it's the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am approach. <laughs> exactly, 100%. And the, the answer that I'm actually waiting for, and I've come across this a lot, but it's taken me a while to, to, uh, to attract those clients. It's clients that are saying, I want to use Facebook to start leveraging to help more people online, to start leveraging my business idea, to start telling my story online, to uh, inspire other people. And through that, I might be able to provide them a service that they might benefit from. So it's a completely different mindset. So I'm spending yep. a lot of time to, to tell them, like, why haven't you tried joint ventures? Why haven't you tried referrals? Do you actually know that your product is working? Do you, do you know who your ideal client is? What is your niche? Who's your target market? And I ask them all of these questions and they don't really know, but they want to go online. To me, that is, you're not ready. You need to be able to identify your ideal client. Um, you need to be able to identify your target market and the, the, the speciality that you're focusing on. So the niche that you bring to the table so that you can then basically say that, hey, this is my ideal market. And now I want to go and find more of them um, if they are online. That's when yep. you start looking are these people on Facebook? Are they hanging out on Pinterest? Are they hanging out on Instagram? Is Twitter a great community for them? Do they, um, are they hanging out on YouTube? Is it LinkedIn? Then we start looking at which is the best platform. So we start recommending where's the best place to go and swim in the ocean. Because there's no point telling you to go swim in, in Manly if, um, if, if Surface Paradise is better. Like, it is just, it's just two different and if things. And if you're listening to this and you're not from Australia, they are two beaches in Australia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm sure I'm making the point. Yeah. It is you, you, need to, you need to know offline first. So one of my favorite strategies offline is, is joint ventures just because of if you're connecting with like-minded people and you've got a, a service or product that could add value to them and they've got something that, that could add value to you, and you're a match that you guys have a great um, chemistry going on, then it would be stupid not to do relationship. But so many people do this incomplete. And Gabby and I, we spoke before this recording, and she's got awesome insight on this. So Gabby, please share the, the, just the, the strategy of joint ventures and how it is to, to make these relationships work and benefit each other. Love it. So this is this is the cool part. First up, getting like oh, or just to just to expose something really quickly. Joint ventures come in many shapes and forms and colors. Quinton and I setting up this podcast is a joint venture. It's two businesses aligning together in order to get more impact and you know spread our word. But it's a hundred percent a joint venture. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, your you, your joint ventures could look in all sorts of ways. The most classic model for joint ventures that I um, have my members, my clients do with, with, um, amongst each other in my program is actually do what's called a service swap. So they team up with other business owners within my membership 
that have a complementary business and they make like the look first up everyone inside my program shares the same values they're all heart centered they're all wicked awesome at what they do and they all care about their clients so there's absolutely no, no no filtering to do. One thing you want to check before you create a joint venture is that the person that you're creating the joint venture is practices business like you do, meaning that if you go above and beyond for your clients, but they're just in it for the dollar, meaning that they're going to overpromise your clients and underdeliver, you don't want to create a joint venture with them. One, you don't want their pissed off clients, you know, cross you don't want them cross promoting with you and you don't want their pissed off clients. And you don't want to send your clients to them because you don't want your clients to get burnt. So one of the methods is a service swap where I actually get my members to create vouchers. And they, they, they're beautiful vouchers uh, for one particular, like for some form of their service. So it could be, you know, for argument's sakes, it could be a session with them. It could be um, a full makeover, a hair, um, a, you know, a, um, a hair color, a haircut, a massage, Whatever it might be, it's a, it's a voucher for a particular service. And what they do is they give each other X amount of vouchers, and then the other person will give that voucher to their most favorite clients as a pure thank you for being my client. I wanted to tell you how awesome you are. Here's a voucher for one of the best massages you're ever going to get, and vice versa. You know, they do a little spiel. They sell the whole thing to the client and say, here, I'd love you to have this because I value you. Then that person goes to the other person and it's up to them to wow the socks off them and retain them as a client. Yeah. And it's a really cool system, right? However, you've got to make sure you choose right in the first place. I remember when I first started out, I, um, I learned this the hard way. I met um, the person who actually created my first website, which is long gone, by the way. Um, hence, I know the whole, you know, you don't need to create a website as soon as you. <laughs> we all learn the hard way. We all learn the hard That's way. right. We're, look, this is all hindsight, people. <laughs> <laughs> the person that created my, uh, my first website, and I won't name names, um, I created a joint venture with this person. And the joint venture worked like this, that for me, whenever I create joint ventures, um, there's a couple of ways. Like you could actually get a profit, you know, a, um, so somebody could say to you, hey, share my cool thing with your people and you get $300 or you get X amount of commission or whatever it might be. It could be that you gain financial gain from it or it could be an add value, meaning that here's something cool that I do. It normally costs two thousand dollars, but because I don't have to market, you're bringing me clients because your clients are coming straight from you. I'm going to take my marketing cut off that, and you know your people can get it for fourteen hundred for argument's sakes. Yeah. So my um for me, joint ventures have always been about that. They've always been about how can I add more value to my clients by setting them up with wicked stuff at a better uh, for a better deal. So um, I was really happy at the beginning with this person. This person was creating awesome results, really rocking. And so that was the deal. The deal was that the website, his, um, the, his websites normally cost X amount. My peeps got them at 25% off, something like that. Anyway, everything was smooth. I'm forwarding client to, upon client to this person. And then all of a sudden, he got way too big for his boots. He started over-promising and under-delivering. And he burnt burnt yeah. several of my clients big time i'm talking like consumer affairs like wow. court cases yeah big time it killed me i still like i had i had clients wanting to leave my program because they had a bad taste like it was just shit it was a shit experience yeah, for my business it's poison it was poison in your, own, in your own community it was poison like I, I won all those clients back and i you know i fixed everything i obviously ended that you know alliance with that yeah, person yeah. and i took a really big learning from it it's a one Make sure that whoever you joint venture with is a good peep, you know, who honestly is in it for the market, for the, for the people. They're not an asshole, you know, that they actually do give a shit and they care about their clients. If they tick that box, they're a great JV for you because you can trust your people with them. And you know the people they send you are going to be high quality because they're happy with that person. So big lesson I wanted to share with you is make sure that you test. So I tell my peeps that whenever you're creating a joint venture, one of the first things you want to do is you actually want to do a service swap. You want to experience each other's cool stuff. Yeah. yeah? That once you've experienced that person's cool thing, then you can comfortably refer people to them, vice versa, they can refer people to you. But if if you haven't, like you know, imagine for a second you know, to two scenarios. 
Um, I'm a masseuse and I create a joint venture with you, Quinton. Yeah. And I say to you, you know what? I'd love to cross promote. I think we have the same clients, the same market. I'd really love to, you know, I'd love to cross promote to you, um, with you. And I'd love to give you like $6,000 worth of vouchers that you can give away as yeah. pure ad value to your clients. That's so but generous. First, Thank you. Oh, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> First, though, you're thinking beauty. <laughs> first, first up, though, I really want you to experience what I do so you feel proud in giving these vouchers away. I'd love to give you my full, you know, full treatment service. And then you come in to my stunning, you know, stunning place of business where, like, literally you walk in and there's, like, a trickling fountain and this beautiful smooth music playing in the background. Everything is just the attention to detail in beauty. It's exquisite. Yeah. feels like you're on a holiday in some tropical five-star resort. You sit down in a chair and a lovely lady comes up and places a heat pack on, um, on your neck and gives you a menu of massages and says to you, pick whichever massage you like. We'll be ready for you in five to seven minutes. I want to be there now. Like, where can I sign <laughs> up? I just want to go and have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> then you pick your massage, the one you love the most, because every masseuse in that place can do absolutely any massage, yep. which means that you're, everyone's so highly skilled that it, you can literally pick your massage on the spot. You don't have to pre-book the massage. That everyone's an expert in everything. You lie down, you know, and the, it's the most comfortable table you've ever lied on. You've got your hole, you've got your head in the hole, and below you they've actually taken the effort to, to fill a beautiful crystal ball with water and place frangip, fresh frangipanis in it. So you're looking at these wow. gorgeous flowers. You get the most amazing massage of your life. In fact, you fall asleep and you're trying to stay awake because it's so good. At the end of it, you stand up. There's a, a beautiful, like, open a garden open shower. You can rinse the oil off, um, get dressed, you know, completely go about your day, walk out. And as you walk out, they hand you a little box, and that little box has homemade organic chocolates in it for you to go about your day. Now, if you had that experience, right, and then I... <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you had that experience and then I, uh, upon that experience, I said, I'd love to cross promote with you, you know, you like, is there any doubt in your mind, Quinton, that you want to give this to all your favorite clients? Not at all. This is, I would hand this out to everyone that, that I basically know that is doing business with me or even close friends, relatives. I would, <laughs> Anyone. I would be telling this story over, over Facebook, over any, any platform that I have. I'll be telling about it on this podcast. If that happened to me, I'd be telling you about it on this podcast and everyone else that's <laughs> listening because it is such a great experience. Where on the that's other fine. hand, it could have gone complete opposite that I rock up there, I don't get acknowledged, there's, there's people screaming in the background, there's noise and there's just so much chaos going on that you don't feel certain, you don't feel that you're important or that you belong there, that all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I don't think this is a good, good idea to send my valuable people, my asset to my business to send them over here. So, yeah, very great point. I love the – wow, so that's an is, amazing – You're like, I want this to be this <laughs> <Yeah>. place. <laughs> the, um, this is the importance of the service swap. You want to make sure that the, your, your JV can wow you and vice versa, yeah? That, um, and, look, ultimately, if you're listening to this going, wow, that's awesome, you know, I wish my business was that awesome, this is your invitation. By the way, this is marketing to make sure that your client experience is exceptional, yeah. You now, if you're listening to this going, oh, you know, my business isn't that sexy. If I was to bring a joint venture in to experience my service, I don't think that they'd rave about it. Then this is your opportunity to step up, get more creative, add more value and create an experience that no one can forget. Yeah, cool? 100%. So, so secondly, so say that, that that test has been ticked. You know, they, they, you get along with them. They provide exceptional service and expe exceptional experience and you're comfortable to, to cross-promote. What you want to understand with your JV is that this is a relationship you want to build and maintain. This is not, this is not just booking a dent, like, you know, booking in a random, random, you know, dentist check if you don't have your own dentist, you know. This is purely a, you want to be able to get along with this person, be friends with this person, be able to call this person up you know, without feeling funny about it and say, hey, you know, have you sent the vouchers out yet? What's, you know, um, do you need any more without feeling odd? You've got to build a friendship with your JV. Yeah. So my strategy for JVs is pretty simple. One is make a list 
of all the different businesses, industries that are a complement to your business. Once you've got that list, and I'm talking like go nuts, list 30, 40, like, you know, I'm not talking list two, you know, like actually make a list, right? Yeah. The um, number two is leverage relationships. Call up all your friends and family and say, hey, I'm looking, um, I'm wanting to expand my business. Can you help me out? Do you know anybody in these businesses, plumber, architect, blah, 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 whatever? And then your friend or family member can say, yeah, Barry, you know, well, what's Barry like? You know, oh, Barry's great. He's such a great guy. Every time we go there, whatever, like, oh, awesome. Could you please hook me up with Barry? Could you please do an intro? I'd love to see if Barry's open to cross-promoting, yeah? Yeah. So once you've gone through your through all your contacts, your list, you want to book appointments to meet these people and, and build a relationship. And then after a coffee, you know, getting to know them a bit, say, hey, I'd love to cross-promote. I'd love to offer you um, an experience of what it is that I do. And so you can see if it's even worth cross promoting. I'm thinking we do like a value swap yeah. where, you know, you give me some of your stuff. I give you some of your, uh, my stuff and we share clients. Are you open to that? Yes. Well, let's try each other out. Come and see me, get a massage. And then Barry walks in. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so once that's ticked, you know, both Barry and you are super happy. Then you create a plan. It's like, okay, what are we going to do? And when are we going to do it by? So you and Barry say, okay, well, let's do these vouchers and let's have them ready within two weeks. I'm going to post them out, you know, to all my favorite clients by the end of, you know, three weeks from now. Yeah. So then it's up to you as the joint venture ambassador the, um, to manage the whole thing. You know, don't rely on Barry doing everything. This was your idea. Take responsibility and ownership. Become a manager of it. Yeah. So, you know, you call Barry in a week and a half and say, hey, Barry, how are you going? Are you going to have your stuff ready two weeks from now? Yep, I'm on it. Awesome. No, I'm not on it. Well, what can I do to help you? Actually, I can't find a graphic designer. Oh, Barry, I've got a perfect one. I'll hook you up. The, um, this is where – does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, but You yeah, want yeah. to manage it. Then you want to make sure it's executed, you know. So then um, one, one cool way, just a little hint, hint for you guys, is an old-school marketing technique called lumpy mail. It's where you post stuff out, but you put something in the envelope to make it lumpy. So people are like, they don't just see it as, oh, yet another thing. They're like, oh, what's this lumpy thing inside there? Yeah, it, it stands some, out. Yeah. There's, there's no other mail pieces they're going to balance on at all. Yeah, they're like, oh, I want, you know, yeah. So, you know, you and Barry decide to do a lumpy mail out where, you know, where um, you, you put the voucher in with something lumpy that, you know, that's a brand match, you know. So for argument's sakes, if, um, if you're a dentist, you're not going to put chocolate in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you could pull a little small tube of toothpaste, yeah? yeah? So choose something that's a brand match for your business. And you agree to do that. So it's up to you to manage. One, Barry, step one, done. Are the vouchers done? Excellent. Step two, did you post out all the thingos? Yes, no. How can I help you? You want to, you know, you want to be managing Barry. You don't want to be sitting there going, oh, Barry didn't do it. Joint ventures suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> and then once it's done, then the next step, whoops, the next step is to test it. Okay, Barry sent out 20 of these vouchers and out of those 20, 10 of those people, you know, came in and out of those 10 people, eight of those people actually like, you know, stayed on and booked in another thing or bought my big package or whatever yeah. it might be. And if that's a perfect number for you, meaning that that worked, meaning that, okay, cool, like we we're pretty busy at that stage, we probably couldn't handle more than that, then you now know that you and Barry can create a strategic system that every three months you run this strategy. Yes. So when you create a joint venture, it's not just a one-off thing. This isn't a one date and off we go. This isn't a one-night stand. This is a long-term relationship. This is where you guys think, okay, you know what, let's do this together. Some of you um, might be coaches and you run webinars. It could be running a webinar for that person's market every quarter, yeah? Yeah. It could, like, whatever it might be, yeah? Um, does, would you agree with that? So making 100%. sure that... Making sure you test and measure it. So if, say, for example, you know, Barry didn't, like, out of the whole venture with Barry, you know, I didn't get enough, like, you know, that we sent out 20, only five people actually rocked up, and that wasn't enough, then we now know next time we're going to send out 40. So we actually, like, 
pay attention to what's going on. You're testing test measures. It. So do you know what's working or not working? You might want to That's change right. the offer. You might it might not appeal to your market as a service. That's um, right. Like the the entire process that you've just explained, guys, or what Gabby's just explained. I hope you've paid attention because she's just perfectly explain the process that we're talking about in marketing of Vino. With Vino, we are talking about finding the person that you, you want to do business with. And then if you're a match, you're going to approach this person, you give them an offer. And if he, if he takes it, it's usually a free offer. You're not going to charge the person for it. So you, you go out of generosity, out of goodwill, of wanting to help a bigger market, and you approach this person. If they align with it, then, then it's basically that's the sale. You've just done the sale. You've marketed and you've, you've just closed the deal. Now you've got to continue with that relationship. So not just the relationships of each other's clients. You need to, re, you need to nurture that relationship with that JV. So one of the things that I actually do is I will write all of my JVs. I will write them a card saying thank you, so forth. Write them a handwritten card. And when the time comes every month, I'll send them out a small little gift. Because I know that the relationship with my JVs are long term. So I actually look forward to building that up with them, whether I take them out to dinner when I see them or we, I send them a book that I know that is important to them. Just keep nurturing that relationship with more and more gifts. And when it comes to a point where you've got a big launch coming up or you've got something that you need help with, if you reach out to these people, they're most likely going to say yes. And that is because you've been following the law of reciprocation. You've been giving so much that the time comes when you, when you need to make, um, when let's say you've got a product launch or you've, you've got a new service that you want to en um, enroll into, an, into the market, you could ask these people for help if they want to help send it out to their list directly. Like It doesn't have to be at that time where he does something to your list as well. It could just be a one-way one thing, uh, one-way promotion. So make sure that you also nurture the relationship with the JV. Yep as much as you do with the clients that you've, that you've accumulated for yourself and for the other person. And make sure you take really good care of their clients. Very. You know, look, you should be taking great care of your clients as well. Don't, please don't get me wrong. But never, ever, ever allow yourself to have a bad day with their clients because that can kill a relationship. You know, it's the worst thing you could do. I respect the, the sanctity of the whole process, that they're, they're sharing their clients with you. It's, they're sharing their babies with you. If you can't look after them, you don't deserve to have them. Yeah. You know? And if you can't master the art of maintaining a great client experience and offering a service um, that actually solves results, you shouldn't go online because online will eat you up. Yeah. You will have... So quickly, your haters will write anywhere they possibly can how much you suck. You'll be rebranding quicker than you can think. Well, Gabs, it spreads like wildfire. The moment a, a poor review goes out, and it's, you don't want to be liked by everyone, but if you've got consistency in your reviews that your product is shit, your service is shit, um, your customer service, there's no support, um, communication with you is poor, if, if that is a consistent, then take note of that because it is you. You need to yep. be able to f work on yourself. It starts within that the relationship that you start expressing to people very close to you, once, you, once you've mastered that, and that's like saying once you've started learning how to swim in your local pool, start exploring in the bigger ocean because there's so many people out there in the world. And if you can't master the relationship with those around you, you need to, um, you need to educate yourself and become higher in emotional intelligence. Then yep, start exploring it. out to nurture relationships with the next, the, the next tier and the, the next tier after that. Yeah. That's how you're going to learn how to add more value and really come from heart space. Yep, love it. You know, and this is where, you know, to sum this up, guys, don't take the ocean on in one swim. Take one section at a time. You know, if you want your marketing to rock, if you want to create what's called a marketing machine where you know all you've got to do is press a button and the thing's ready, Meaning if you've got a fair few joint ventures that are rock hard solid, you know you can just press that button and it's done. It's funny when we're launching this particular podcast, I asked my joint venture partners to check out my podcast, subscribe, write a review to help it get out there. Every single one of them were like, sure, yes, done. They did it as fast yeah. as possible. You know, they they become like your champions in business. They it's like a little mini partnership. Yeah, you know, that's what you want. So our message today, guys, is take one marketing strategy at a time, master that strategy, 
and then move to another. Then take that one, master that one, move to the other. When you go online, highly consider, instead of spending thousands of dollars learning how to do a certain form of online marketing, hire an expert that's already spent heaps and heaps of their time, tens of thousands of dollars on becoming excellent at it, you know, and can solve your problems faster than you could possibly imagine and save you money in the process. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, by the way, if you've heard me cough, it's not that I'm an old man with emphysema. It's that <laughs> I'm um, recovering from the flu that I got after my holiday in Bali. The, um, <clears throat> I, I clearly wasn't ready to come back to work because <laughs> I needed to extend my holiday. Anyway, so that's why that, that sound has been there. It's not a dog. It's not a plane. It's uh, <laughs> anyway. um, Anything you want to add before we sign off? Yeah, look, I want to um, – I just want – I can't emphasize it enough that as a business owner, you need to master the foundation. Don't – don't fall in a trap for the next shiny thing that comes about. Learn the foundation of what marketing is. And that's what this podcast is all about. It is no one knows you. So how do you establish yourself as the authority, warming them up? So a cold audience becomes warmer. Once they're warm enough and when the time is right for them and when you're actually putting something out there, they'll purchase. They'll become hot. But that is the foundation. So when you're out there starting to go and looking for an expert on um, whether it's LinkedIn, it's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's YouTube, whatever it is, as a business owner, you need to ask the questions, how am I going to warm up my market? How are you suggesting that I'm going to get cold audience warmed up and let that person implement it? Let him put forward a strategy that's working then. Stop thinking about what is the best thing to use for your business right now. With Gabby's event that we're filling up, we're using video ads. It's working phenomenally. It might not work in a month's time. It might not work as well in six months' time. But it's a process of warming up a cold audience, making them warmer. So you need to ask yourself the question, if no one knows me, if everyone is cold, how can I warm them up? How can I gain their trust? And that's when you start putting out awesome content. You start helping without expecting anything in return. You really start putting your best case studies forward. That is the social proof that you know your stuff. And then the rest will follow. If you keep warming them up, eventually they're going to turn around and they're going to say to you like, hey, dude, I've, I've been following your stuff. It is amazing. I love your work. I love especially what you've done for that client. I'm in a similar situation. Would you be able to help me out? And that's when you'll go into the next process where we start talking about um, closing the client and what is the right way to be the trusted advisor so that you know that you're giving them the best service, the best product that will suit them and not manipulating them and just getting the, the, um, just getting the sale so that you can get your commission. That is, I think that is the next topic that we're hitting into. So you guys are in yes. for a treat. Um, thank you so much for listening, guys. And Thank you for hanging out. It's been awesome hanging out with you. It has been <laughs> phenomenal. And, guys, I just want to thank you, listeners, because we have actually reached number one in new and noteworthy in iTunes. And this is because of you. You are the listener. Thank you so much. And if you've just tuned in, please go and rate us on iTunes if you've enjoyed the show. Um, tell others about it. This is our love that we keep giving to you. So keep spreading the love. We thank thank you, you, guys. Yes, exactly. Everything Quinton said times two. <laughs> <laughs> I shall, well, yep, we'll chat next time. Mwah. Big Mwah. love from us. See you, guys. You rock, Gabby. Talk to you. <laughs> you rock too. Bye, Bye. hun. You've been listening to Marketing with Vino. If you enjoyed this episode and want to access the resources discussed in this episode, go to marketingwithvino.com and select which episode you've listened to. 